I wanted your perspective, your take. And I asked you, uh, you know, can you bring us something that is on typical cyber attack type security story? And you've got one for us. And it all Absolutely. sort of revolves, believe it or not, folks, around a cup of coffee. That's absolutely right, James, and thanks for having me on this webinar today. So one threat that's definitely on the rise, this is a new type of cyber attack, relatively new, and the criminals just love it. It is so trendy. And check out, this type of attack actually uses people's computers to mine for cryptocurrencies. That means alternatives to Bitcoin, other types of coins. And specifically, just a few months ago, researchers discovered that the customers of Starbucks in Argentina, of all places, had all of their computers used for mining cryptocurrencies. So that's when people actually logged into the uh, Wi-Fi and the stores and the Starbucks stores. And as you know, Starbucks offers free Wi-Fi. This is one of their most uh, advertised benefits. Their computers were being used to mine for cryptocurrencies because while they loaded up the Wi-Fi landing page, the one where you click, I accept uh, the terms, that page actually ran this small piece of JavaScript. This is a tiny little JavaScript that was just included in that web page, something that not a lot of people might notice. It only delays their computer in maybe five or 10 seconds. Not even noticed, but was actually being used by the criminals. And they were using the script that's called CoinHive, a crypto miner that actually claim that the people who created this crypto miner, they say they've invaded, invented an exciting new business model, one that allows people to monetize their business with their customers, their users' CPU power. Now, I don't expect Starbucks actually knew any of this was happening, but what's really interesting is that you might think, James, that this is a crazy new trendy criminal activity, but there are certain organizations that have actually taken a lesson from this. For example, Salon.com. This is a very popular U.S. publication, an online site, and they are offering magazine content. Now, most of the times, they use uh, advertising in order to pay for that content. But some people have started using ad blockers. So Salon.com are now offering people to participate in their suppress ads beta program, which quite simply will actually use the same type of coin mining scripts on people's computers in order to pay for their access to the journalistic content that they want to read. So isn't that something? It's a new business model that was actually invented by criminals now being adopted by traditional and online publications. What do you give a lot of other publications and resources mm. for content that may look to do that. And it also brings up the idea, and, and this has happened throughout a lot of technology evolutions, but some tech might be used in a nefarious manner, ultimately becomes some type of mainstream. And I was, am at a, a conference that uh, I've been attending this week, and one of the security professionals there at the, the conference was saying to me that your best security professionals mm -hmm. are hackers. That's now, absolutely right. That's what I believe in. I, I think you could agree with that. And, and yeah. I want to, this is where we're folks start revealing a little bit of the background because Karen does have some thoughts on that. So what are some of the important lessons that we can learn from criminals about all of these digital assets? Well, the first thing I learned in the past few years, and this is something that criminals know very well, everything has value. Specifically, criminals have figured out how to extract value from any type of digital asset that they can get their hands on. Take, for example, using the cloud, and whether it's for storing files or running computing-heavy processes and using all that power that's in the cloud, all that computing power. Well, a company, a um, very famous company that utilized the cloud, had uh, their Amazon Web Services and specifically their Kubernetes instances. So Kubernetes is a piece of software from Google that actually allows people to manage their Amazon Web Services and their cloud instances. And this company was using uh, these services, as I mentioned. It's actually a company you may have heard of. They're quite famous, they're a very innovative company, they're called Tesla. So when the criminals were actually able to get access to Tesla's cloud computing instances, what did they use all that power for? Did they overtake cars or send out funny tweets? No, they actually used it once again for cryptocurrency mining. And this is gonna be a recurring theme in our talk today because it's one of the largest or the fastest growing trends as far as the creative all learned in the past year is that the risk of ransomware is still out there. 
If you don't know about ransomware, this is a type of malware that will infect and encrypt the contents of your computer and then request a small payment, usually in Bitcoin, but also in alternative currencies. Now, you, the criminals have actually figured out something very clever here. They don't need to steal anything away from you. They don't need to take your credit card numbers or steal your precious files. All they have to do is disrupt your access to your important documents. And in certain cases, like for example, hospitals, where that data, those documents, those computers are running life critical, life and death situations and decisions, they will get their payment. In fact, in 2017, a massive ransomware attack called WannaCry disrupted the UK's national healthcare services. According to their statement, about 30% of their clinics, their hospital systems, their doctor's offices were disrupted because of this single attack. Now, the attack, it was called WannaCry. It didn't just hurt the UK, the, the Brit Britain and uh, the national healthcare services there. It actually disrupted operations all across Europe. So for example, a Renault Nissan factory in the south of France had to stop everything happening on their factory floor because their computers were infected with this ransomware, as did Telefonica, a massive telecommunications operator in Europe. Now, when it got really tricky, in, according to my opinion, is when this virus actually encrypted and uh, disrupted the screens of German train stations. So this is the information screen. Now, of course, you might say, well, when this happens, how does it interrupt or disrupt the movement of trains? In this case, it didn't. But it does absolutely disrupt the trust that people place in these devices and these computer screens. Just imagine walking into an airport or a hospital and seeing these types of scary messages all over the place. Or maybe something even scarier, like this message. So this is a relatively new piece of ransomware. It's been around the past year, and it's called Bad Rabbit. And it actually utilizes two interesting things, basically uh, preying on human psychology. So the first thing is that it actually masquerades as a legitimate Adobe Flash Player file. It's even signed, so an average user might look at it. It might not seem like it's an illegal or illegitimate file. It would trick a lot of people. The second thing that this uh, threat actually does is it, has, uh, it counts back. It counts downwards. And that actually preys on people's ability to know, you know, it makes them scared. Is my computer going to be okay? There's a timer. It gets people really anxious and really afraid. Now, the next thing I want to show you is this uh, really interesting fact. Not a lot of people know about this. So a lot of people think that ransomware is actually something from, you know, last year or that it's a past trend, but it's actually here to stay. Just a couple semiconductor manufacturing company was hit with a variant of WannaCry. Now, you may have never heard about this company, but they are the world's largest dedicated semiconductor manufacturing facility. That means they make the chips and the silicon components that go into a lot of the devices that you have and that you rely on, whether it's your phones or your laptops or a lot of other types of consumer electronic devices. So when their facility is disrupted and they claim that the disruption went over a few days and actually caused some damages to their supply, to their ability to supply their semiconductor products, this actually damages the worldwide supply of consumer electronics in a very nuanced way that influences all of us. And all of this for a state-of-the-art facility all the way in Taiwan, just because of these out-of-date, end-of-life operating system environments that were the primary target for the WannaCry and similar ransomware viruses. So in fact, you might be thinking, well, Karen, I don't have these out-of-date operating system environments in my home or my office. I'm already up with the times. I'm running Windows 7 or other types of operating, or maybe Windows 10. Well, it's important to remember that even Windows 10 is going to go to end of support in about 18 months, in very early in January 2020. So that means even those devices are going to start getting hit with attacks that are isn't patched and isn't actually uh, uh, is no longer supported by the company. This is a good time to think about how you can utilize cloud infrastructure to get past that problem.